Mesa Verde National Park is a monument to the ancient Pueblo cliff-dwelling people. And park rangers take hiking tours to some of the not quite accessible parts of the park. One day, before a particularly difficult hike, the park ranger came out to meet the group of people who were all ready to go. She said to them, she bellowed at them, this morning we are going to go on a two-hour hike and we're going to climb up a very steep hillside and you're going to climb a 10-foot rope ladder and you're going to walk along a narrow path along a cliff. And then you're going to crawl on your hands and knees in the dark and your clothes are going to get dirty. It's a difficult hike. It's very dangerous. And if any of you have health concerns, well, you better think twice about going. The crowd was stunned. They were silent. They, they were intimidated. And they looked around at each other and said, do we really have to do that? And then this young voice shouts out, a little girl saying, do we really get to do all that? Do we get to climb a rope ladder and, and, and crawl on our hands and knees in the dark? Do we really get to do that? Is that true? This morning you just heard Jesus tell the disciples to take up their cross and follow him, to deny themselves. And that story of the little girl and the crowd in the park is a little like our gospel lesson today. A walk in the park with Jesus, that sounds really good. But climb a rope ladder and walk along a cliff? That sounds like risky and dangerous business to me. Risky and dangerous business. And like the people in that hiking group, we often wonder, pick up my cross and follow Jesus? Do I have to do that? Or do I really get to do that? Well, we are all good Christians, and we've all picked up our cross. And so I thought this morning, these crosses got to be somewhere if we've picked them all up. So I looked outside the church, and I looked all around, and in the pews and outside, I saw 12 crosses. And I wondered, where? Where are all these crosses we've picked up? And then I found them. I found them right here. Right here in the waters of our baptism, where we were marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. Where in your baptism, the Holy Spirit sealed you with the cross of Christ. Marked and sealed by the cross of Christ, that cross became part of us part of your life, part of the calling of Jesus. Yes, in the waters of our baptism, marked by the sign of the cross, we answered Jesus' question. We answered Jesus' challenge to pick up the cross and follow him. So this morning, I have a question for you. What does it feel like? What is it like in your life when you hear Pick up the cross and follow Jesus. Is it a little bit like, do I really have to? Or is it a little bit like, do we really get to? Because when you answer that question, you will be able to answer Jesus' first question in the text. Who do you say that Jesus is? Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Do you ever feel a little bit like Peter? Wanting to do the right thing, but sometimes failing? Torn between our desire to be faithful and the reality that sometimes our faith fails. Times when, like Peter, we put our faithful foot 
in our foolish mouth. Peter is a great example of us, of our up and down lives. Peter has answered the big question when he said to Jesus, you are the Messiah. Now you might have thought that that would have earned Peter a lot of attaboys. But now he hears Jesus angrily tell him, get behind me, Satan. Poor Peter. Poor Peter. He thought he just got the disciple business right, and now he realizes that being a disciple isn't as simple as just saying, you are the Messiah. For not only is Peter rebuked and called Satan, but now he and the rest of the disciples are told that to follow Jesus, they too must deny themselves and pick up their cross. Now, did you really come to church this morning to hear Jesus say to you, pick up this grotesque instrument of death, all you little Satans, and follow me? Probably not. Isn't it a lot nicer to hear Jesus say, come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Or, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. Now those are comfortable passages that soothe our fears in a risky and dangerous world. But denying ourselves and picking up the cross? Well, that sounds a lot more like, do I have to? Rather than, do I really get to? I don't know about you, but getting up in the morning sometimes is just challenging enough. <laughs> Facing the challenges of each day, paying the bills, putting food on the table, worrying about health concerns, perhaps feeling depressed by the division and anger in our nation. Isn't that overwhelming enough? So when we hear deny ourselves and pick up the cross, there can be an urge to say, well, that was just Peter talking to his disciples way back then. That isn't what he means today, so I'll just pass on these verses. But if we pass on these verses, we're going to miss something really, really important. You see, there is something that Peter missed in what Jesus said. Did you hear it? Did you hear what he missed? I missed it the first couple times I read the text. I was focused on the rejection, the suffering, the death, the very human troubles that consume our lives and keep us from fully living out our faith. But there, there in the text it was, six words that change everything. And on the third day, rise again. Right there in front of us is the key. The good news, it is the promise of abundant life, eternal life, through Christ's resurrection. And right there, dear friends, is where you'll find the answer to Jesus' first question, who do you say Jesus is? This is not a passage about suffering and death. It is about resurrection faith, living life to the fullest through God's love for us in Christ Jesus. It is not about losing our life. It is about finding our life, real life, true life, eternal life, in the resurrection promise of Christ. Now, Mark's community might have understood pick up the cross as a call to martyrdom. But the Greek word from which we get the word martyr doesn't mean death. It means to testify, to witness, to be a witness to your faith, to testify to true life, resurrection life in Christ. Christ sees all of the crosses that we carry, the cross marked on us in our baptism, and calls us to carry the cross, to be witnesses to our faith. Carrying our cross, we are called to witness Christ by standing with the oppressed. Carrying our cross, we are called to witness Christ by bringing food to the hungry. Called to witness Christ, we are called to be the living body of Christ in this world today, serving our neighbors in need. The call to pick up the cross and follow Jesus is a call based upon our faith in Christ and in the confidence of God's victory won for us on the cross. It is a resurrection promise of new life. And in living out that new life, that new resurrection life, 
you will know the answer to Jesus' first question. Who do you say that I am? Christ's call to discipleship, to pick up the cross, means living out our faith together into the truth of God's grace. It's about, it's about living forward, about carrying the cross marked on us in our baptism, and not carrying our burdens, our sins, our guilt, or our fears. Is there a risk in carrying your cross into the world? Yes, there is. Standing for what is right in a world full of wrongs can be risky and dangerous business. But the risk is simply to give life to others. For it is in giving life to others that we receive life ourselves. Today at this table of grace, you're going to know the answer to Jesus' question. Who do you say I am? For here, here, we can all answer as one. Jesus, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the true Son of God, the living God. So sisters and brothers, if any would come after me, they must deny themselves and pick up the cross. May not be easy words to hear. But they are not an invitation to death. They are an invitation to life. And yes, feeding the hungry, standing with the oppressed, caring for creation. When we follow Christ, yes, we really do get to do all of that. And thanks be to God. Amen.